Today we're gonna to be replacing our slickness test, which has been a subjective test where I kind of rub my hand on the surface and give it a one or a zero, pass or fail, and we're gonna replace it with a test where we actually conduct an experiment to determine just how slick the surface is. So let's get started. Going to be using something called the coefficient of friction. Now the best way to visualize the static coefficient of friction is let's imagine we have a rigid plane and maybe that is our test panel and then maybe on that panel we place a big test block which is also a rigid surface and it has some kind of a mass and that means because of gravity it has weight and also it has uh, normal force. Now guys, the test panel, I'm sure you can guess, is my test hood, which we've used in so many videos. But the rigid block that I'm talking about is gonna be these three little ice packs that are epoxy together, and they have this nice velvety lining that's been glued on that I can easily replace to keep the test kind of fresh. So this block here is representative of this block over here. And our hood is the panel on which it will be dragged along. Now what the static coefficient of friction is, is this effort as we start to pull on it, and then we pull harder and harder and harder, and then finally it gives and starts to move. So that is gonna be the force required to create that motion. Now this handy little device is pretty accurate. It is used to measure the trigger pull, the effort of the trigger pull of firearms. And we can use it to pull on those little ice packs and it'll record the highest reading. This device is going to give us that force number. Now this all seems well and good, but what is the formula to figure this out? And the formula is gonna be the static force of friction is equal to, this is the Greek letter mu, which stands for the coefficient of friction in our case, or the static coefficient of friction, and that's gonna be multiplied by Fn, which is gonna be our normal force. So, the normal force is gonna be this right here, and that's gonna correlate to Fn, and then force down here is gonna correlate to this static force. Now static force of friction and normal force typically use units of force, specifically Newtons. I know that this is 1,000, and actually I'll write it, 1,040 grams. It takes 400 grams to get this to start budging and moving on the polished car hood that we do all our testing on. Now in our example, we can convert to Newton. So let's say that the static force of friction is gonna be equal to 400 grams divided by 1,000 to make it kilos times uh, 9.8 rather, uh, which is our Earth gravity constant. And then our normal force is gonna be 1040 divided by 1,000 times point, uh, 9.8. So this one's gonna be equal to 3.92, and that's Newtons. And this one is gonna be equal to 10.19. So let's make this formula work for us. 3.92 equals the coefficient of, the static coefficient of friction, and then that's multiplied by 10.19. So what we can do in our case is divide both sides by 10.19. And of course that cancels out. Static coefficient of friction is equal to 0.38. Now hopefully this algebra is making sense for you guys. Just to make it a little easier for us, we don't have to actually convert to Newtons. And this is because gram force can also be a unit of measure. In our test, we're just gonna use grams because everything I'm using is measuring in grams. Now, this might be something that's interesting for you guys if you're thinking about like the contact patch on your tire. You know, we all know you wanna put a bigger tire on to make more, you know, grip. But it's interesting, if you look at the formula we've just been looking at, area is nowhere in it. So you might be thinking, well, how do the tires grip more when they're bigger? If you had a perfect situation where you had that piece of rubber and you were gonna move it on a perfect piece of concrete with the kind of grittiness that it has and you had just the perfect 
uh, scenario, you would get a maximum coefficient of friction based on those two materials. What happens in real life is because of the unevenness of the bumpiness, this is actually dynamic, and the bigger tires with the softer rubber compound uh, that deforms very well, it actually allows you to find that maximum coefficient of friction with a higher likelihood. So if you had a skinny tire, uh, that uh, just couldn't conform to the road enough in order to get that maximum coefficient of friction, that's why you have less grip. Now you guys might be thinking, okay, great, so we figured out the coefficient of friction between the polished panel and our block, so how does this help us test waxes? Well, we're gonna apply the wax to the hood and allow it to cure like we normally would, 24 hours, and then we're gonna see how the coefficient of friction changes between the wax test hood and our block. And a good wax that increases slickness should make that number fall. And we're gonna use the delta between the two numbers to score points. We have a, what we're gonna call a base coefficient of friction. And we know that in the system, the coefficient of friction is 0.38. The formula for points that I'm gonna use is gonna look something like this. We're gonna say points are equal to the base static coefficient of friction minus waxed static coefficient of friction multiplied by 30. You might be wondering why 30. Well, essentially I wanna give three tenths of a point for every hundredth of delta. It kind of works out well. I've already tested all the waxes we've done so far. And with this formula, you know, tens are kind of the well scoring ones. And then the low points are kind of the ones that are doing bad, you know, your threes and fours and stuff like that. Now we need this wax static coefficient of friction. So again, it's the same thing, right? We've got our panel, except now it's waxed. So in our case, let's imagine it took 220 grams here. 200, oops, 220 equals, and then we've got our static coefficient of friction. And then that's multiplied out by one, 1040. And then we're left with static coefficient of friction equals 0.21. So now let's apply our formula here. Points equals 0.38 minus 0.21 multiplied by 30. So we're going to say points equals 0.17 multiplied by 30 points equals uh, 5.1. This particular made up wax, it's not related to any real one, uh, would get a score of 5.1 points. So guys, I hope this hasn't been too boring. Let's go do our practical experimentation. But before we do that, I'd like to remind you that as usual, there are gonna be some Amazon links down below in the description. If you click through any of those and purchase what I'm linking to or any product on Amazon, I get a very small commission. I'd also like to remind you that my website is also linked down below. It's got all our test results, including these new results. And as usual, I would love it if you subscribed, click the like button or left me a nice comment if you have ideas for further testing, products you want me to see. Um, any of that stuff. I love talking to you guys. Now let's go do those tests. So guys, the very first thing we're gonna do is prep our panel, and this is something I usually do for my testing. I'll go ahead and include it here. Now that was a very quick polish because the surface is already reasonably in good shape. Let's go ahead and decontaminate it with some rubbing alcohol. So there we go guys, we have a nice, very smooth, freshly polished surface. Let's find out the friction coefficient there. All right, let's go ahead and do this measurement five times. 0 0.41, 0 0.45, 0 0.35, 0 0.43, and let's do the last one here, 0.36. And when we divide by five, we get, well, <laughs> my calculator's being wonky, 0.4. So 400 grams, exactly what we've been talking about. Now, since the surface is polished, we can apply a wax to it for future testing. I'm gonna use our trusty Seal and Shine new formula. Yeah. 
There we go. Now we would let this cure for 24 hours before doing more tests. Now luckily I've already applied the Griot Ceramic 3-in-1 on this side here over a day ago. Now let's do the testing of the Griot's product. We've got everything calibrated. We're going to pull. We've got 0 0.18. 0 0.12. 0 0.11. 0.13, plus 0.15. So 0.69 divided by 5. So in this case, we've got 140 grams. We're going to round up. Now, some of you guys may be wondering, does it matter how long I pull it for? And the answer is, as long as the surface doesn't change, it really doesn't. And the reason is, is that when you first get it to move, that is static coefficient of friction but gliding along is kinetic coefficient of friction. And the reality is gliding along takes less force than starting. And some of you may have noticed this when you try to push a car. When you first push it, it feels you know, monumentally hard to get it rolling, unless it's a very small car. So now let's figure out the points for Griot's. You've got 140 grams divided by 1,040 grams for the weight of the item there. And we've got 0.13, because we're going to round down, coefficient of friction. Now we're going to take our 0.38 minus 0.13. We're going to get 0.25. And we're going to multiply that by 30. So we get 7.5 points. Not a bad score. That is above average for that Griot's. So guys, I hope all this was interesting for you and you learned something. And we will be using this testing in future wax test videos. So look out for those as I release more detailing content. I hope to see you guys again soon.